Cars.com Auto Review. Hi, I'm Dave Thomas with Cars.com. There are some cars that are just so popular and sell so well, they kind of just fade into the background and become part of that car landscape when you're driving around. The old Ford Escape was definitely one of those SUVs. The new 2013 Ford Escape hopes to turn some heads. Even with a quick glance, it's easy to see Ford has redesigned the Escape from the ground up. While the old one looked more rugged, the new Escape is more modern looking. But there are big changes on the interior and under the hood too. There are three different engines you can get with the new Escape, but there's one big story, and that's fuel efficiency. Even the base engine we have here, it's a 2.5 liter four cylinder, it was actually in the old Escape, it's carried over here. Even this engine gets two miles per gallon overall better than the old version for 31 miles per gallon on the highway. Most shoppers will likely move up to the SE model, which starts about $2,500 more than the base. That's the trim level you need to move up to to get the new 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. Why do you want to pay more for that engine? It gets 23 miles per gallon in the city, 33 miles per gallon on the highway, and has 178 horsepower and 183 pound-feet of torque. So you're not giving up mileage to get some of the best power in the class. What if you're a V6 shopper? Well, you're not going to find one in the new Escape. It's gone for 2013. Instead, there's a larger 2.0 liter turbo four-cylinder that gets similar power to the V6 with much better fuel economy. I've driven all three, and the 1.6 liter is definitely in the sweet spot. It delivers a better driving experience than the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, or the Chevy Equinox four-cylinder, and it gets better mileage than all of them. Like other recent redesigns from Ford, like the Focus and the Fiesta, the interior materials are really nice for the class, even in this base model. But those compacts from Ford, and even their large Taurus sedan, always felt cramped to me from the driver's seat. Not so in the Escape. I have plenty of room, and the cabin is open and airy. Ford's multimedia system, called My Ford Touch, is also available in the Escape. We've criticized it in the past for being hard to use, but in the Escape, it sits up here high in the dash and actually has an extra shelf of added controls that make it easier to use. Getting a base model isn't all that bad, though. It comes standard with features like a tilt and telescoping steering wheel, a six-speaker stereo, and most important, a standard automatic transmission. When you see low advertised prices on some of the competition from Kia or Mazda, they have a manual transmission and getting automatic costs a lot more. Rear seat room is pretty good for this class. I have plenty of room behind the driver's seat where I had it while I was driving, so it's right on par with the Honda CRV. The Chevy Equinox has a second row that slides back and forth, so it has a lot more legroom. But the nice thing about the Ford Escape is you can lean back to recline. The cargo area is also spacious and has a nice low load floor, it makes it easy to get things in and out. It's a little bit smaller than Honda CRV, but it is a bigger cargo area than Chevy's Equinox or the Mazda CX-5. There is one major flaw, however. You can't lower the back seats from the back of the cargo area. You actually have to walk around to the side and use a lever on the bottom of the seat to flip them flat. They're also really heavy when you're trying to get them back in place. Ford has redesigned a lot of its lineup recently, but with the Escape, it may have finally gotten the right combination of good looks, performance, comfort, and fuel efficiency. Basically, if you're shopping for a crossover right now, you have to put the Escape on your list. For more car-related news, go to cars.com or our blog, kickingtires.net.